All right, construction champions, it's your host, Ron Newsbaum, and we're here for another amazing episode of Construction Champions Podcast, where we're burning the damn house down twice a week. Every Monday and every Thursday, you can tune in to hear from experts throughout the construction industry, help you become the champion you're meant to be. We're not here to tell you a bunch of shit that you might not execute on. What we're here to do is to give you practical stuff that you can take and implement today into your business on your drive home or on your lunch break while you're listening to us. It's stuff that you can take a tidbit, go look in the mirror, and start becoming that champion you were meant to be. I am super excited for our guest today. Ryan, it is great to have you on the show today. Likewise, Ron. Super nice to meet you. And yeah, I'm Ryan. I'm I'm, I'm with Loan Cater. We're a business financing group that helps construction businesses specifically because we love construction guys. And we finance their projects, their equipments their payroll, and any other immediate need. Awesome, man. So I'm super excited to have this conversation here today. And I'm going to dive right in there. And I'm going to ask you the million-dollar question. And that is, what makes a construction champion? In my personal opinion, please excuse my ignorance. I'm not someone who has first-hand experience doing the work, the manual labor. But in my personal opinion, it's somebody who knows how to manage the flow of money. Right. Absolutely. So, and I think that's something that becomes hard in construction. I know I've been there that there could be a lot of money coming in sometimes, and then there can be little money coming in and really starting to understand the dynamics of that. So this is your word or this is where you're an expert at is in that. So how do guys start to get some control over the money? Well, I see, I see a lot of, of, of 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 construction guys, they take on jobs that 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 end up not paying them, and they just don't have the reserve for when something like that happens. So they still need to make their payroll and pay their vendors, but the original jobs they completed are not paying them. So really, I think it's just having a good ending balance, a cash reserve for the rainy days, and developing relationship with outside lenders previously before anything happens that they can tap into beforehand i'm not saying go out there and take out million loans i'm saying just be prepared for when something like that happens well you know what's amazing about us having this conversation here today is the episode prior to you was a financial mm-hmm. uh he he just run, he's a fi- he helps people with finances mm-hmm. and he his biggest one of his biggest messages was go start having relationships when you don't need it. He was like, people wait till the last minute when they need a loan and then they try to start building relationships with people. Mm -hmm. And it's the worst time to possibly do it. They they want, so I'm telling you, you want those relationships starting to be built when times are good and start building like, how can you guys help grow the business with capital needs? Not how do we keep the business afloat? capital needs is that correct exactly it's kind of like trying to build a rocket ship and once you launch it fixing it mid-year mm. i love that so how do guys you know say i'm a i'm a guy i'm out here i'm i'm doing i'm doing good mm-hmm. you know i i have some cash flow crunches and stuff here and there mm-hmm. but i want to be proactive because i'm going to scale my business i know it's going to be capital intensive so mm-hmm. what are the steps that guys need to start to do to start building those relationships with guys like yourself. So I say the first place to go to is your bank, not us, because we're typically the more expensive option. So go to your bank first and try to establish a relationship there. Downside of that is you need a positive PL, you need two years' time in business, and you need to be actually generating a large amount of revenue. So try try your local bank first. Make sure your credit is in check before you go, because if your credit is below 680, they're probably not going to talk with you. So work with them first. And then you go inside the online market lending place. All right. So when you're talking credit score 680 and above, are you talking personal credit score or business credit score? What do you what do people look at for that? So so with online lenders like ourselves, we don't look at the Duns and Bradstreet business credit. We strictly look at personal credit. So 
your personal history, just because if the loan does go on there, you'll be personally held responsible. That's typically how we online lenders look at things. Yeah, and that, I mean, that's pretty standard. Even with banks, they're going to want a personal guarantee on any, even if you're, I've been down that road. Where, 100%. You know, they just, that's just what they want. So like, I understand build, because we hear it all the time. It's like, you got to mm -hmm. build your business credit, build your business credit, build your business credit. But like, as you're getting up and going and moving along mm -hmm. that you need, you're going to have to personally guarantee this stuff. Like that's exactly. just what it is. There's not, not a whole lot that you can do to get around that. 100%. Agreed. Awesome. So as guys, they're, they're going down this road and say, mm -hmm. so you said uh, for like supplies, payroll, uh, mm -hmm. capital growth, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So say I'm in a crunch. Mm -hmm. I just, I need to get something going to make payroll for the next couple of months. I got a big job that's out there. It's going to be coming in. What, how, how do guys go about working through that? So I'm actually really glad you, you asked me this. I want to connect this to another point, but guys typically just come in and, and they look for the exact amount they need to fill in the, the missing gap of cap of capital they want. So the immediate payroll, et cetera, et cetera. They actually don't typically look at the terms enough and, and, and mathematically decide if this makes sense or not. So, so. Uh, if that doesn't make sense, let me know. I'm, I'm about to link it to another point of mine. Yeah, no. It's can you dive into that? Because I think this is very – for guys that are listening, like this is stuff that can make the difference. Because if you're just taking out loans and not looking at the terms, it can, it can get ugly real quick. Exactly. So, so yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about that. They are – let's say as, 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 as somebody who leads a team myself, I know that – Paying your people is 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 really crucial, right? So some some construction owner will come into place, and and they realize they need to make payroll, and they're willing to take whatever terms they can get just because they need to make sure they look good in front of their guys, and and that's fine. But you gotta be able to do the math to see if you can truly afford this or not. And I'm talking about the cogs, I'm talking about the payroll, and all the other operational expense you need to include alongside the cost of capital. To see that final payout and the ROI on the loan, and and especially the small construction owners, they usually don't, they they aren't, they aren't sophisticated, they aren't sophisticated enough to look at all of that, and I think that's something that everybody needs to do. Look at everything, the whole picture, before taking anything out. Mm. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with that, and I just think it's like we just get in this mind, like. If somebody's like, okay, we can help you, and you're like, mm -hmm. okay, I'll just take the help and don't necessarily look into, hey, what does this help incorporate? It's like, well, even when you bring on a bad employee or a bad mm -hmm. somebody to help you on a project because they're there willing to help, but you know it's going to cause more problems long term than it is really going to help you. Uh, so I love that. And you said you were going to move that into another point as well, or another topic there. Yeah, exactly. So same, same, same type of idea, but this time itself for filling in their media payroll and expenses is for projects. So I know, I know, I know, I know that project that everyone wants to take, but you don't have the capital for is that shiny object that you want to take money out and borrow and then use that money to do that project. But again, you got to do the math first. You got to have some room for forever. Got to do the math first. And I say this, even though I'm, I'm making money off these loans and I'm the expensive lenders, you got to estimate the room of error and leave space in between. Well, no, but that's like, this is why you're on the show is because you're going to be honest about this stuff. We don't, I mean, that. I say it on the time, all the time on here, like profit's not a bad word. We're all in business for a reason, but- this is why I love, like, you're here educating everybody on exactly the stuff they need to think about, because when they're coming and getting a loan from you to do this stuff, it's going to cost them money. Exactly. And you're just, you're being upfront and honest about it. So like, there to me, there's nothing wrong with that. Like right now, this is a conversation that's going to help guys in the construction industry understand capital and capital management when they're not dealing with their own cash 
better mm-hmm. than somebody that was just on here wanting to talk about loans and how to do that. So I, I absolutely love it. Uh, so when, when we're talking about those projects that you were just talking about where it's like the shiny object, I don't have the capital to do it. I want to go do, get the capital. Is that something like... Should you wait until you have that project and you have like some signed contracts to come start having a conversation with either the banks or yourself on what that looks like? Or is that something that guys can proactively, I know we had talked about building those relationships, but can guys proactively, I don't want to say line of credit or whatever, where they know they can for this like is there like any pre-approvers or anything where guys start to have access to capital if needed if they have one of those projects that they need to say yes or no to and they might not have the time to take 30 days to figure out the the back end capital aspect of it how would that work yeah exactly and i think that's exactly what you want to do you will want to go out of your way even before you get the project you know you something's going to come into place and build those relationship and options first Relationship, yeah, just build up the book of options, not even so much relationship. Just have the options line up for you for when the project does come into play. Awesome. And then you had said for you guys do capital for like equipment and stuff as well. Mm -hmm, 100%. So, like a heavy equipment you're looking to buy, but you don't have the, the, the cash to buy the equipment out completely, we will usually come in and give you. A, a 90% or 70% LTV. And then from there, you, you'll be able to pay a small down payment to grab the equipment. Mm. That's how it works. Very awesome. simple stuff. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's stuff that banks do, but banks can become very complicated mm. when, say, you're buying six trucks or you're buying three trucks and mm. or a few excavators or something. It starts... It can be... How do I put it for with like some banks, it can be worth spending the extra money that it's Mm -hmm. going to take to get the capital somewhere else to make the deal happen. than the timelines and headaches that you can deal with going through a bank to finance that kind of stuff. If that makes sense. It does hundred (laughs) percent. I know exactly what you're talking about. And that's really, that's really why we come into place. Less paperwork. That's us. Yeah, no, yeah, you understand. You've been there. I've I've been there trying to get deals done, and you know, tat. You're trying to get deals done before tat season sometimes. <laughs> like, exactly, you know, exactly. It, it, you know, sometimes even if you have those relationships, you just need stuff to move quicker, or you just need the not the hundred questions. Like, exactly, because speed is king. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you're you have a growing business. You have like you're it's uh you have all this stuff happening and then when you're you're working on expanding that and you need to buy equipment and stuff and you know banks are great hmm. but you have to be very proactive like when we talk about building those relationships I mean I was in my my bank the guy that ran my stuff for my bank I was in there once or twice a week having conversations with him not even doing business, just having conversations. So I had a better understanding and stuff would still be a headache sometimes. Like I would go and it would just, I don't, so yeah, I, I, what you guys are doing and I love it. It makes complete sense. Uh, What for guys out there that are just trying to grow Mm -hmm. and they're doing well, they have they have money in the bank. They're mm-hmm. continuing to create good processes, but say they just want they have a big expense, and it's mm-hmm. not necessarily something that has. It's not like buying property or buying equipment. Say they want to invest into like their systems, something that has a lot of value to the business, but on a mm-hmm. piece of paper has no value is that something like is that something that you guys can help with or is that something that you just have to save the cash up for to come in say you want to do a rebrand 
and it's going to cost you 50, 60, $70,000 to rebrand this company, bring in an expert on it. And mm -hmm. there's really no way to show on paper that it's worth $70,000. But is that something that guy, like you can, you can bring capital in to do something like that to catapult the business? Or is that something that guys need to save up the money to do? So I would say that a lot of the capital that we give is unconstrained, meaning that you can use the money for whatever you want. If you think it's going to help you in the business, 100% can do it. Okay, that's awesome. And is that so that's pretty much across the board for what you guys do that. So it's exactly. Awesome. You want to explain that a little bit more kind of how that capital works and what like the the and it's called, what is it? It's called uh un, it's unsecured, correct? Is that what it's called? Correct. So this is the unsecured option and it's called merchant cash advance. So this option is the most priciest of all of them. But this is also the one that's that's the quickest and you got no constraints going on whatsoever. So this is something that you can close in 24 hours to 72 hours. Usually generally between those time ranges is when the capital is deposited into your account. And that's including the hours you do the application and, and then talking with the rep. So that's the fastest option. Of course, it's the most expensive option. And then once you get the money, there's no constraints. You can use it for whatsoever. Okay. And then, so when you talk, I don't know how much details you can legally get into on the, on mm -hmm. the show. And if you can't just tell me, that's fine. That's fine. So when you're talking, uh, most expensive options, are we mm -hmm. talking interest rates? Are we talking fees? Are we talking points or what, what exactly all comes into that when somebody's doing one of these loans? We're talking both the factor rates, both the fees, and the cost of capital. We're talking everything across the board. This is probably your most expensive option. Yeah. Yeah. No. And that's, you got it. Hey, if you're not doing stuff the right way, or you get in a pinch, like Ryan's the guy that you, what, what he's saying, he's the guy you're going to have to deal with. And it's not going to be cheap to get that money. And, you know, we can all say here, stand here and say, we haven't been there, but when you're growing a business and you're learning how to grow a business. Sometimes you just get in a shitty situation and you just need to make something happen. So the stuff Ryan's talking about, it's, it can come into play. So don't write it off as, you know, Oh, it's not going to be me. If you're not doing the right things, it's why it's so important to continue to be a construction champion because it's going to cost you a lot more if you're not proactive in this stuff. Exactly. Manage that flow of money. Awesome. So what are, you know, when you, I guess for my listeners out there, who, who are like, what are the top three things people are coming to you to help get them through? Projects, payroll, and then the last part is the equipment. But I would say that that part is almost negligent. It's always almost a project or payroll. Okay. And, so we, and it's like, more of an emergency situation. It's Correct. not something where they were thinking about it. Mm -hmm. It's something where, like you said, 24 hours, 72 hours need the capital to be able to either get a project up and going or finish a project, make payroll, mm -hmm. continue. I mean, these, I know this guys, you could listen, like this is real life stuff. This stuff happens. Like I've been there in a crunch where, Payroll checks are going out at noon instead of 7 a.m. And I know that sounds crazy, but I mean, it's what happens. And you have to keep an eye on this. This is why everything we talk about here is so important. But it's also what Ryan does can come in and save you. Exactly. And, and go ahead. And that third that third one I actually left behind, but third one we do a lot is, is debt refinance. So another thing I want to talk about is don't take too, too too much funding out at once, especially when you know you can't handle it, especially when you're just delaying the better boats. Sometimes people borrow just to just to pay back the previous loan. The third thing we do is debt refinance. That's when we take hard assets, like the current heavy equipment, the excavators, the trucks you already own, or a real estate property or construction project you already built out. We use those assets to refinance debt. That's actually... Mm. That's actually usually the biggest loans we do 
a lot of restructuring. And how how does that work? Is that you know, if I say I you know I have this company, I have all these different things, and I'm wanting to clean it up because I feel like it's really bogging me down. Is that something that I'm I'm better off going and talking to somebody like you about, or is that something where I can still build some relationships other places, or what does that look like? So so without a shadow of a doubt. You should always keep your option open. So I'd be, I'd be happy to help anybody else in that situation, but you should always keep your options open and, and talk to your banks. Most of the times they won't be able to help just because you already accumulate all that, all that debt. And then, but you also want to talk to your private players and that's the biggest one in your private equity firms. Those two are probably your biggest options. That's going to help you. So private equity will come in and refinance. That's what you're saying as well. Yep. Huh? Interesting. It's because they want a piece of the pie. Correct. Especially if you, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if you're not wanting to give up a piece of the pie and some guys are, I mean, you have, like, I, I love what Ryan, like, keep your options open, but like the bank is the one that's already carrying the notes. And they're going to look at you like, well, you know, what do you want us to do? You're, we're, we're already financing all of this. Private equity is going to come in. They're probably going to want a piece of the action. Uh, Because that's their end goal is to have the entire pie of the action. Uh, So somebody like Ryan can come in and help navigate that. And if you guys, like I said, what I love about Ryan and what he's doing here is like he's he's very upfront. He's very educational about it. He doesn't want him to necessarily be the first call that you go to. And he wants you to understand what that capital is going to cost to get it. So It's still, it's about growing your business, doing the right things, but sometimes projects go sideways, payments come in late, you need something that's going to keep the business rocking and rolling, and that's what Ryan's there to help with. Awesome, man. So for all the construction champions out there, if they wanted to follow you, learn more about what you're doing, maybe have a conversation about what they have going on in their business, where's the best places for them to do this? So you could actually find us on Instagram uh, at Loan Cater. You can also find us up on YouTube. But the best place to reach us is just directly on our website, LoanCater.com. Just fulfill out a form and we'll contact you shortly. But those are the three places I would go to find us. Awesome, man. And all those links will be in the show notes for everybody. And Ryan, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for giving me the time. I really, I really enjoyed this and appreciate this. <laughs> I enjoyed it too, because I, I think this is a conversation like has to be had because people get in a shitty situation. They don't know what to do. Well, here, this episode of construction champions podcast, this, this is how you can bridge that gap right here in an honest, open conversation about it. Not just, Hey, the, this is the loans. We're going to take all these points and everything. And But like, here's a conversation and why and how to be proactive about it. So I I think, I thank you for coming in and having this conversation with us. Likewise. All right, construction champions, another amazing episode where we talked about what happens when the shit hits the fan and you got to fix it quickly. Now, I I mean, I opened up about some stuff where, you know, I've been in situations where this stuff came into play and I've been to over 25 million a year in annual revenue. And I'll tell you what, you don't get there without some hiccups, some learning experiences, some stuff going sideways along the way. And that's when sometimes you need somebody like Ryan that can come in and throw you a lifeline real quick that, like you said, it's going to cost. To get that lifeline, I mean, it sounds crazy, Uh, but you put yourself in that situation. So don't be necessarily embarrassed because the thing that ends up happening then is if you put it off, it's going to get worse. And if you have a business that's like it's a business that's worth continuing and going with. Don't let one sideways project or one side, like one scenario completely sink the ship for you. There's people out there that can help. Ryan's one of those guys. He's open to have that conversation and see if there's a way they can help. But like he said, be proactive. This is two two shows in a row 
where we had a, a finance guy and now a guy that can get you the finances. Uh, both talk about just being proactive. Like we wait too long. It's just like everything we do. We wait too long to fire people. We wait too long to send the proposers. We wait too long to tell the homeowner bad news about their project. We wait too long to build the relationships with the people that control the capital as well. Whether it's all banks, whether it's Ryan or anybody out there that you're dealing with that deals with money, these are relationships that we shouldn't be waiting until this, the boat has a hole in it and it's taking on water to go have the conversation around. And I think it becomes uh, a situation where people don't want to have these conversations because they feel like they're in, they don't feel they're embarrassed because this stuff has happened or the, but they're just embarrassed that the boat is taking on water and that's fine to feel those emotions, but you're running a company. You have to figure out how to plug that hole and not let the water come on. And whatever that is, you're responsible for other people's livelihoods as well. So be proactive about this. Maybe, you know, you have some more life vests on the boat or you have uh, another boat, a dinghy that you can get off of this boat that keeps everybody safe and continues moving it out at sea. So just start thinking about that stuff. Because like I said, two shows in a row with the same narrative around it of just being proactive with everything. Champions, I think that matters and until next time go be the champion you were meant to be introducing Buildercoms, your all-in-one construction communication software say goodbye to communication mishaps that cause frustration among builders contractors and clients the Buildercoms platform unifies communications making it easy for you to chat share updates and collaborate effectively in one place Experience the transformation in construction project management with Buildercoms. Visit us at Buildercoms.com to learn more and start streamlining your projects today.